Hey guys, welcome back to another Java tutorial video on my channel. I am Riti Datta and in this video, I am going to teach you Java 8 Lambdas. First of all, a really, really heartfelt gratitude from my side to all of you who have showered love and support to my two videos on Java tutorials. The one being the Java collections video and the other being the multi-threading and concurrency video. I've been going through all of your comments and trust me, it's really, really motivating to find out that a lot of you have actually learned a lot of new things from my videos and keeping that love and support from you guys in mind. I'm making this third video on this tutorial series. So do keep on supporting me like this. That will in turn motivate me to make such tutorial videos in depth for you guys guys to be very honest it takes a lot of effort to create these type of tutorial content because first i have to go to the content read it myself curate it i have to figure out that how to teach you a particular concept in an exciting way so that you are able to grasp it quickly by getting the relevant examples so a couple of things that i really have to do then recording such long videos editing it so it takes a lot of toll on me so uh, please keep on supporting so that i'm able to you know create such content more content in the future and one of the very few ways you can support me is pressing the like button subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell icon so that every time i upload such a video you, you are notified now without any further ado let's get started with java lambdas functional programming and in this video i am going to teach you lambdas from the very depth i'm not going to only show you just the syntaxes and how you can write lambda expressions and all those things which you would find in a lot of other videos obviously those things would be a part of this video but apart from that i'm also going to show you that how lambdas work behind the scenes how does a compiler pick a lambda expression and convert it into java code what used to happen before lambda expressions came into being right how could you implement functional programming in java you know without uh, lambda so i'm going to teach you all those things and trust me it's going to be a very very exciting video about lambdas you would learn a lot of new things apart just from the syntaxes of lambda and trust me if you watch this video till the very end you are not going to be disappointed so now let's get started with lambdas i'm very very excited to teach you lambdas i hope you are as well and now let's start this tutorial session on lambdas i hope i really hope by the end of this video you get to learn something new so yeah let's get started so before getting started on with the lambdas, you know, let's look at the very basics of Java. Okay. So in Java, we know that we can pass any primitive data type value or we can pass references like references of an array, reference of an object, right? But can we pass a function to another function as a parameter? Like I'm talking about function as a parameter. People who are coming from JavaScript background, they might be aware of it. But if you are not coming from a background or like a JavaScript, like and if you're coming from a background like let's say C or C++, you must be a little bit overwhelmed over here to uh, understand that why do we need to pass functions, right, as an argument. Uh, so first of all, we will jump into that part where I'm going to give you a use case, right? I'm going to give you a use case where you would see that why sometimes passing functions uh, makes our code look very simpler, right? So we'll jump into that use case first, right? And then we will see in Java, can we really pass functions as an argument, okay? Or as parameters. And then slowly we will see that how, how do we move on to the world of lambdas and function programming from there. So yeah, let's get started. So here, just to save some time, I have already written three classes and I'm going to walk you through those three classes, right? These are very simple classes uh, and this is just to give you an example, right? Okay, so let's look at the hotel class first. So this class has three parameters. One is the price per night. That what is the price of the hotel per night as the name suggests itself. Next is the rating. Like on a scale of one to five or a one on a scale of one to 10, what is the rating of this hotel? Like is a user rating. Uh, like what you basically see on uh, websites like make my trade, booking.com, go, I go, etc. And next is the hotel type. Hotel type, it's basically an enum, which is like for now I've inserted values for three star, four star, five star, okay? So there is a constructor, right? Uh, to initialize this class. Uh, then we have the getters and setter methods and one is the two string method, right? So it looks very simple, right? It's kind of a Pojo class, nothing fancy. Next we have a uh, hotel service class, right? Uh, which basically is doing nothing at this moment. It initializes a list of hotels in its constructor. Uh, and basically for now we have different types of hotels. I've added five entries as of now to this hotel list, right? Okay, so now let's say a user comes up to me and says, hey, Riddhi, uh, give me the list of hotels, which is less than uh, price 5000 okay and in order to do that in order to serve the user i have to write a function in this hotel service so i would write a function public list of hotel get hotels or filter hotels uh, less than less than uh, that's a price okay the price is going to be passed by the user okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of hotel, uh, filter hotels, which I would be returning back to the user. So what I'm doing is based on the list of hotels, the, all the hotels that I have, uh, I'm filtering out few hotels based on the user 
condition or the criteria okay and what i'm going to do is return filter hotels okay and here i am going to traverse to the list of hotels that i have okay and i'm going to check that if is hotel less than the given price okay so the price that have been passed by the user and also let me pass the hotel as well okay then filter hotels dot add this particular hotel okay and i have to create this function uh, so let me just create a method this is going to be a boolean and here i'm going to just check that return hotel dot get price per night if it is less than equals to the price then return true and or else return false okay so this is the function cool let me paste it over here cool and i'm done no problem now let's say another user comes up to me and says hey riddhi uh, give me the list of hotels that are all five star and i'm like okay no problem so what i would do is i would copy this piece of code and i would paste it here and i would say this time filter hotels by five star okay and no parameter and what i would do is is hotel five star okay and i would just pass the hotel this time okay and i would just create a method and let me just copy this i will keep it here okay and here i will simply say return hotel dot get hotel type is equals to equals to hotel type dot five star cool so the filtering condition is basically if the hotel dot get hotel type is five star then return true and add it to the filtered hotels else return false and don't add okay so far so good now another user comes up to me and says hey i don't want to book hotels which whose rating is you know less than two so at least give me hotels which are greater than equals to whose ra oh, ratings are greater than equals to and now again i have to go and write another filter function can you see the problem over here the problem is when i wrote the second filter condition you see the all of the code between this filter function and this filter function is exactly the same bearing one change and what is that one change the change is in the filtering condition method right you see between this piece of code and this piece of code right we are calling two different methods for the filtering logic to get the filtering logic in this case when you're filtering hotels less than a given price for for the for the filtering condition we are using this is hotel less than a given price method and for the filtering uh, hotels by five star we are using this is hotel five star method for the filtering logic or the get the filtering condition apart from that apart from this change in filtering condition the rest of the code remains the same and when different users come up to me with different filtering logic the problem is that i have to create this function again and again which is resulting in code deduplication which is not a good thing to do but the only change lies in calling this particular function the rest of the code absolutely remains the same right so can we get into a point because i know that this this uh, user can can come up with different f filtering conditions this this uh, so this is just a dummy example where we have only three parameters for the hotel right for three attributes for a hotel but this hotel class can have multiple parameters in a real world example right so in order to deal with that the user can get up can come up with multiple such you know conditions and it's not always possible for me to first of all get into the service go into the service uh, write new piece of code for every new filtering logic that the user comes up with and also most importantly we are leading to code deduplication which is also not a good thing because the only change is in the filtering logic that lies inside the filtering uh, condition method right so can we get into a place where we would be having one generic filter method by calling filter method i mean this method right and somehow we can pass this function as a parameter okay and who is going to pass this function as a parameter the user is going to pass this function as parameter and inside this function the logic to filter out the hotels would be there okay so now let's see how can we do this okay and first of all let's understand the structure what we, where we are trying to get into right okay so let me just try to you know comment this piece of code and write a generic filtering function okay so you would copy this piece of code because there is no point in writing it again okay 
and let me uncomment it. Let me just change it uh, to filter hotels, right? And we have to pass the filtering function as a parameter, right? So for now, I'm just writing filtering some filtering function, right? And what we have to do is we have to call this filtering fun function. Okay, so this is the this is the thing where we are trying to get into. So we'll have this filter hotels where the user will pass some filtering function, right? It will create a list, right? It will traverse to the hotel. It will call this filtering function that is passed by the user, right? And based on what the what the filtering function will return, we will add to our filter hotels and return that to the user. So now, can you understand that why it is important sometimes to pass functions as a parameter because it can save in a lot of code deduplication. Now, if this is very clear to you, let us get into the second part. That in Java, how can we pass around functions, right? Because this is going to be a new concept. And I'm sure the first thing that comes to your mind is like using lambdas. People who have a little knowledge about lambdas, they would say we can easily do that using lambdas. But my question to you is now, let's forget everything for a moment. Just learn, unlearn everything that you know, right? And try to be with me, okay? Forget about lambdas and everything. In Java, before 1.8, right? Before lambdas came into existence, how can we pass a function, okay, without lambdas? And we are going to do exactly that, okay? We can do that by wrapping a function inside an interface. How? Okay. So we are going to create an interface. We will call it filtering condition. And those of you who have already watched my collections video, I'm very sure you would be getting a little bit of hang of things. So there I've talked a little bit about lambdas, but here I'm going to talk about in depth, right? Okay, so let's create an interface, filtering condition. I've already created this interface, I guess. Okay, I'm not created this interface, I will create it. So let me call this interface filtering condition with the user is, is which the user is going to pass, right? And let me just first create this interface. Okay, and this interface, let's say it will only have one method. Okay, what do we name this method? Let's uh, name this method test. Okay, that is basically it is testing whether this particular hotel should be there inside uh, our filter hotels or not, right? You can give it any name as far as you're liking, but like I'm choosing to give the name test to it. Okay, so abstract test, okay, and it takes a hotel and it should be a boolean. Okay, I think we can name this a bit better. Uh, we can name this hotel filtering condition, but it's fine. I, I hope you get the point. Okay, I'm really not focusing too much into the clean coding part of things. Or in the in these tutorial videos, I will make a separate video on clean coding. But my job is to make you understand the particular topic that we are concerned with, and here it is lambdas, right? Okay, cool. So we have created this interface that is a filtering condition which has one method, abstract method. Again, you don't need to declare it as abstract as well, but it's fine. It's there's no harm. Uh, because interface methods are anyway abstract, right? So uh, we have created one method test, which takes a hotel as a parameter, right? Now, here in the hotel service, what we do is we would simply do filtering condition dot test for a particular hotel, right? So what are we doing is we have created an interface filtering condition, which is only one abstract method that is test that takes a hotel, right? And the, the point we are trying to get at is whenever a user, whenever a user is trying to filter hotels based on some condition, based on his own individual filtering condition, what he would do is he would create a class that implements this filtering condition. And when he creates a class that implements this filtering condition, we know that he has to implement, he has to implement this abstract method that is test, right? And inside this test, he would basically write the logic of the condition that we were defining over here in, in these classes that is, is hotel less than uh, a given price or is hotel five star. This he would be writing, this logic he would be writing, right? And he would be passing this object of this class to our hotel service method that is filter hotels, right? And on the basis of that, we would be calling this test function, right? And we would be filtering out. Still not clear? Let's uh, also test this out a little bit, okay? Okay, now let's create a main class and test uh, exactly what we are trying to do. So we'll create a main class, uh, okay? So first of all, what we need to do is we need to create 
hotel service an instance of this hotel service class okay hotel service is equals to new hotel service that would you know create a list of hotels as we saw in the constructor now let's say a user comes right and he wants to filter hotels okay what he has to do he has to pass some filtering condition right so let's say the first user what he has to do is uh, he has he wants to filter hotels which which has a price less than 2000 or let's say 5000 so what he would do is he would create a class okay he would create a class filter hotels less than 2000 okay and what he would do is he has to implement the filtering condition okay right and he has to implement this method and here here in this test method he would be passing the logic right so he would be writing the logic that return hotel dot get price per night less than equals to 5000 uh, 2000 sorry okay similarly and if another user comes in and says hey i want a class or i want uh, the list of hotels right so what he would do is he would pass this filter hotels class that he just created okay to this hotel service uh, filter hotels method right and this will return a list of hotels list of hotel hotels equals to this and if we print this hotels okay so this will give me the list of hotels right list of hotels price less than 2000 cool so just let me print it okay um, yeah cool let me just quickly print it and uh, like run it and then show it to you what is getting printed okay so you see that these are the hotels which got printed whose price is less than equals to 2000 okay so now can you understand that we passed functions over here right what function did we pass again we passed this particular function as parameter and how did we did so we created an interface filtering condition which had which had one abstract method test right and then user who wanted to pass the function or wanted to pass the filtering condition function he we made sure that he creates this class that implements this filtering condition and inside the method that he had to implement he passed that logic right he passed that logic okay he basically wrote the logic uh, on which he wants to filter the hotels and since since this filtering condition this this class got passed as a parameter to this hotel service right and inside this class we called the test method right now let's say what if some other user right wants to you know uh, wants to get the list of five star hotels so what he would do he would first create a class okay very uh, similar process he would create a class where he would say uh, filter five stars right and it has to implement the filtering condition implements okay now has to implement the method test okay and here it will just say hotel dot get type is equals to hotel dot hotel type dot five star okay so if it is a five star hotel then it will return true otherwise it will return false now back to the main method what we would do is uh, we would just you know uh, list of hotel five stars hotel service we will call the filter function filter hotels and here we will pass new filter five stars of the instance of this class right where the test method has its logic implemented which is basically testing you know uh, filtering out the hotels uh, based on the hotel type right and we will simply print out the five stars list okay we'll just run it and we'll see that we got the hotel which has a rating of five star okay so i'm jotting it down the process to 
pass a function in Java, right, without using lambdas. And this can be an important interview question as well. So like, look at it carefully, okay? So passing functions in Java, okay? So the first step is to create an interface, okay? Uh, and instantiate a class that implements the interface implement the method of the interface where the method body is equals to the function body which you want Ted to pass as parameter pass an object of the concrete implementation of the interface right so basically what we are doing is we are creating an interface then we are creating an instance of of a class that implements that interface and inside that class we are basically writing the function logic which we want to pass as parameter so basically we are wrapping the function logic or the function body inside an interface right okay cool so now this is the basic logic or this is the basic process that you have to follow for passing uh, any function in Java. Okay, so now we can see that every time when a user wants to create a, a, a specific function, right, and or he wants to, you know, pass any filtering logic or he wants to pass a function, you he has to create a new class file, right? As like by class file, I mean the filter tells us in 2000 or filter five stars, right? Now that is very verbose and that is not a good thing to do always, right? So there comes uh, anonymous inner class. Now, what is anonymous inner class? Let's see. So, let us first, you know, delete these two classes. Okay. Let's say we don't want to create these two classes. Now, over here, uh, we need to pass an instance, an instance of this filtering condition interface, right? That is basically an instance of a class, an object of a class that implements the filtering uh, condition, right? And we can do that easily by anonymous inner classes, which is a concept of Java. So, what are we going to do is this is going to be the syntax of the anonymous inner class that I'm going to write. New filtering condition. Right? And basically, this is nothing. This is just the syntax of anonymous inner class. Basically, this what this piece of code does is it creates an instance of a class, right? That implements this filtering condition interface. And since you know that when you are implementing an interface, you have to implement the unimplemented methods. Therefore, you have to implement this piece of code, this function, right? And in this function, this function is basically nothing but the logic that you're going to pass, right? So basically the function that you're trying to pass, this is the function that you're basically trying to pass, right? And why anonymous? Because it has no name. This function has no name, right? So it kind of helps you from creating a new separate class file, right? Uh, because that kind of made your code structure a bit complex. And therefore, using help, with the help of anonymous inner classes, you can uh, just pass the instance of a class that implements this interface and inside that interface, your function that you're trying to pass is wrapped, okay? So here we can simply pass the logic return hotel dot uh, get price per night less than equals to whatever the logic that you had, okay? Cool. Similarly, uh, we can do this as well new filtering condition let's create another class that implements this filtering condition but this class has no name okay that is why it is anonymous in a class and here we will just pass return hotel dot get tie get hotel tie is equals to equals to hotel tie dot five star okay that's it cool so with the help of anonymous in a classes we don't need to create a class file separately and we can just help you use this anonymous inner class uh, syntax, right? And the compiler behind the scenes will create a class for you that implements this filtering condition interface and uh, also the method, this this method, right? That you're implementing uh, would be a part of that anonymous inner class, okay? And that would be passed as parameter to this particular uh, method, uh, which you're calling, that is this hotel service, where you get this instance of a interface that is building condition and in this way in java you can pass functions okay so if this is very clear to you you have understood you know 50 percent or 60 percent of lambdas because lambdas is just nothing it is just a syntactical sugar to these things that i just explained right lambdas 
does this thing only behind the scenes? I mean, if you write a Lambda expression, your compiler kind of converts the Lambda expression to this code, right? So, you know, Lambdas is there just to, you know, make your code more readable, make your code look more beautiful and stylish. And it, it also helps you to save a lot of time by writing a lot of verbose code, right? Uh, because if you see this anonymous inner class, uh, it, it looks a bit complex, right? To the eyes when you write it, okay? So lambdas just help you uh, to beautify this code. That's it. In my opinion, that's it, okay? Uh, so let's see how, what does lambdas expression do? So lambdas expression basically will just modify this anonymous inner class, that's it. So if you want to write these two piece of code using, uh, using a lambda, right? Let's see what we would do. First of all, I would write this and convert this into a lambda expression and then I would see the I would tell you the rules of lambda expressions or how to write a lambda expression. There are a couple of rules. You don't you just need to remember it. Once you practice it, you would remember it. No need to worry. Okay. So let me just comment this piece of code. First let me copy it and comment it down. And now we'll write the same expression using lambdas. Right? So instead of you know creating this new filtering condition and all these things, what you would do is you will write, you will pass a lambda expression, right? Okay. So what does this filter, filter hotels take? It takes a filtering condition, right? And we are trying to basically pass a function. And what function that we are trying to pass? The function test, that is the abstract method of this filtering condition, okay? And what does this take? This take takes hotel as a parameter. So inside a bracket like this, take this parameter, give this arrow, right? And here write the function body that we are trying to pass okay so a lambda expression has three parts the list of parameters enclosed by this first bracket then this arrow and then this uh, expression of the function body right and this arrow basically separates the parameter list with the function body okay and here you can basically write return hotel like the, basically the logic that you were writing hotel dot get price per night less than equals to 2000 that's it okay uh, this is giving error because I have to change the project compliance to 1.8 I did it now that it is gone so now let me just you know uh, run this piece of code and this is basically used a lambda expression so when we wrote a lambda expression what the compiler did behind the scenes was it converted this piece of code into this piece of code that we just wrote above right so basically it saved you you know from creating an anonymous inner class and instead so see here you don't need to inst uh, instantiate this uh, an object of uh, this new filtering condition and all those things the compiler will do it behind the scenes for you whenever it see sees a lambda expression all you need to do is you just need to write the function that's it because if you if you consider it I mean, so far, uh, creating the interface, then creating a class that inter implements that interface, or maybe creating an anonymous inner class. These were these were the things that you were doing to achieve a single goal of passing the filtering condition or passing the function, right? So lambda expression comes to help you exactly with that, uh, to make you do the thing that you actually want to do and separate out the other parts which are not really required for you to bother about, right? So, so basically you want to pass a function, right? So that is why what the Lambda expression is saying, hey, just pass, just pass the function, okay? Just, just write the function that you want to pass. I would take care of the rest of the things like creating an in interface, like creating a class that implements interface and you know, and then putting this function body inside this test, whatever it is, the, the, I will take care of it. The compiler will take care of it. You just pass the function, right? So that makes the code look cleaner and you see, this code looks much more better and it looks as if you're passing a function, right? Then now you're getting a feel that, okay, I'm not passing a function to a function or passing a function to a method, right? Here, probably you are not getting that feel here. Basically you were creating a class, right? And object of the class that implements this filtering condition. And then you were writing a test method and also there were a lot of complex things going on. So Lambda comes in and simplifies those things for you. So here you're getting a feel that you are passing a function, right? And behind the scenes, the compiler, whenever it sees the Lambda expression, it does exactly this, kind of this, okay? Now let's look at an interesting thing. In this filtering condition interface, what uh, would have happened if we had another abstract method, test1, which takes hotel, what would have happened? Okay, here it gives no error, but suddenly we find an error in this Lambda expression. And it says that is not applicable for this argument. So why is it happening? See, try to think of this logically and then only you would be able to remember things. Otherwise, you have to read about a lot of theory and mark it up. Uh, 
I mean, try to think everything rationally that why this is giving error. See, you are passing this as lambda expression, right? Here you are not mentioning that this function body should go inside which particular function of this particular interface, right? As I told you, in the anonymous inner class, you were clearly mentioning that, hey, this function body will go inside this test function. So the compiler can see it, right? But here you're just passing a function body, right? And the compiler has to, you know, write, uh, like put the function body into the respective function test, right? So now think from the compiler's perspective, okay? Here, the compiler will see or it is calling a hotel, uh, filter hotels that is a part of the hotel service okay and here it, he is passing some lambda expression right so i mean i have to you know create a class that implements uh, this interface and right like, like put this piece of code inside the test okay so the first job of the compiler is to figure out that okay i have to create a class but which interface should it implement right because first of all it has to know the interface that it needs to implement otherwise he won't know that he would the, under under which function or which method he would put this piece of code into right because first he has to get the interface okay this is the interface then the interface will have some methods and in that method in that abstract method he would be put this you know function code right so first of all he has to figure out figure out this interface how will he get do that he would open the declaration of this filter hotels and you will see okay this takes a filter condition interface so that means i have to create a class that implements this filter condition interface now done now second step is to put this function body or to put this piece of code that I have supplied inside the function body inside the method that I am supposed to implement, right? That I'm supposed that any class implementing the filtering condition is supposed to implement. But if there are more than one method, if there are two, three methods, if there are two, three abstract methods, how will the compiler know that inside which abstract method you would put this function body in? So far, when we just had uh, one abstract class, right? The compiler, it was easy for the compiler to figure out that, okay, this piece of code should go inside this test because there's only one abstract method. So it's very easy for me. I mean, the code that has been supplied by the user, the function that has been supplied by the user is actually the function body of this particular class that is test. But when there are more than two, three abstract methods, it's very hard for the compiler to figure out under which function I should put this particular piece of code into that I just passed as function body, right? So that is why whenever you are implementing a lambda, right? Or a lambda expression, you have to make sure that this interface, this interface can have only one abstract method, right? If there is more than one abstract method, if there are two, three abstract methods, then the lambda expressions cannot work because it would be very hard for the compiler to figure out and it would be absolutely impossible for the compiler to figure out that, hey, which function body is the user talking about here? Like under in which of under which of these abstract methods I would be putting my code into? Like think of this rationally. It won't be possible for the compiler to figure out, right? And that is why the developers, the Java developers have said that whenever you want to create a user lambda expression uh, using this interface, this interface can have only one abstract methods, right? It you can have you know, multiple default methods, as we know, an interface can have default methods, static methods, you can have all those things, you can have multiple default methods in this interface, you can have multiple static methods in this interface, right, which we are in any we're going to see in action uh, very soon. But abstract method, which we are forcing the user to implement where the the function that we want to pass in, uh, or the filtering condition on, in this instance, that that sh there should be only one such abstract method. Okay, otherwise, you would get a compiler error. Okay, it's very important. Such an interface which has only one abstract method is called a functional interface, right? And you can also give a function interface annotation. It's always advisable to give a function interface annotation whenever you are using creating such a function interface. And lambdas only work with function interface. And function interface is basically an interface which has only one abstract method. Okay. So now you understand why lambdas need a function interface, right? That is very clear to you, I hope. And we can annotate function in uh, any interface that we want to use with lambdas, which is only one uh, method, right? Uh, abstract method. We can annotate it with function interface. It is optional, but it is advisable, right? It is not necessary to annotate with function interface. We just saw when, when we didn't annotate with function interface, the lambda expression still worked, but it is advisable to do it. And one more thing here, when we didn't have this function interface, uh, we could write uh, you know another method right and 
this was not giving us any error. But whenever we annotate with function interface, we'll run into an error saying that a function interface can only, because this is not a function interface, because the function interface can have only one abstract method, right? So like, forget about these things. All, all I would recommend is whenever using a Lambda, please know that Lambdas only work with function interface. That is an interface, which is only one abstract method. Okay, cool. So now there exists a couple of functional methods which I've already taught you in my multi-threading video as well as my collections video. One of them is the comparator, right? So if I go into the comparator class, uh, again, go and read about comparators in my collection video, I've already taught it. You see, it's a function interface. See, this function interface annotation is there. It has only one uh, uh, abstract method that is uh, compared, right? This is the abstract method, okay? And then you have a couple of default methods, right? These are all default methods. That is why you can have multiple default methods. And also one more thing, this equal methods is overridden. This is also an abstract method, but this is like kind of overridden from the object class. So whatever methods are being overridden from your parent class, which is object class in this instance, they, and even if they're abstract, they are not counted in the function interface, right? So all you have to like keep in mind is, the methods that you are introducing are not like overriding the methods that you are introducing and declaring as abstract. Those are the methods that should be only one inside a function interface, right? Other methods which you are overriding from your parent class, the object class in this instance and declaring it as abstract, that's fine. And also one more thing, these are again interface basics. Uh, in an interface, if you like, uh, it is by default public and abstract. So since it, nothing is declared over here, you can understand this is a public method as well as an abstract methods. Okay. And here you, you would, you can question me that why, you know, uh, there are two abstract methods allowed. So even if it is a functional interface, the reason, as I told you is this equals method is basically overridden from the object class. And that is why we don't care because we are not introducing this method in this interface, right? But we are introducing this method in this interface. That is why there is only one such method, right? Only one such uh, abstract method and the rest are multiple default, uh, methods which we which is fine like you can have multiple default and static methods and if you have seen my collection video you must be remembering that uh, we used to pass the compare method as parameter similar just like this okay so let's say this I, I will again rewind you a bit so let's say collections dot sort and let's say I want what does this take okay so let's say that we have an array list list of integers LST equals to list dot of and let's say one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it creates a list. Now if you see this method signature, what does it take? It takes a list and a comparator. Okay, that means this comparator has the what? It has a compare to method. So we'll be passing your implementation of the compare to. Okay, so what I would do is I would pass the LST and here. What I would do is I would write a lambda function. What does and the lambda function basically? Uh, what what does this comparator? Uh, and basically, we are going to implement the or provide our own implementation of the compare to method. So if you see this compare to, uh, just let me open that comparator once again. Okay. Uh, if you see this compare method, it returns an int and takes two parameters. Okay. So here it takes two parameters. In this case, it is int a, uh, integer a because it is generics integer a and uh, integer b okay and here we want to sort it based on the descending order right so what we did uh, we basically passed an implementation of the compare to method okay compare method and since it takes two parameters we pass these two parameters and this is basically the function body okay that's it so I'll, so you can now understand that for lambda expression you need a function interface there is another one, another function interface that is vulnerable, which we saw in the multi-threading video. You see this function interface has one public abstract void run method, okay? And whenever we had to run a thread, we used to pass an instance of runnable using lambdas inside what? Inside the thread class, okay? Cool, so now we understand that how can we pass uh, functions in Java without using lambdas, how those things are done, right? and how lambdas helps us and behind the scenes what does it does by creating a class you know uh, that implements that interface and all and that interface can have only one abstract methods otherwise lambdas won't come into picture right and that is such an interface is called a function interface i also gave you a few examples of function interfaces that already exist uh, in in java right which are already used right now you'll see a couple of rules of the lambda expressions and how can we 
further simplify the lambda expressions, right? Okay, so now let's look at a couple of rules of lambda expression. So first start uh, with parameters, okay? Let's uh, look at this collections, right? This collections.sort method which takes a comparator. Here, we are declaring the type of uh, the uh, objects, right? So this with these two being integer, but we can choose not to pass or specify the declarations and the compiler will figure it out. So it is not necessary that you have to like uh, declare the type of parameters in this lambda expression, right? And such a parameter is called an inferred type parameters. That is the compiler will infer the type of these parameters and how will it infer that? So basically the sort function, what uh, the compiler will check. Okay, what does the sort function take? It takes a comparator, right? It will open the comparator, right? And uh, it will figure out, okay, since it's a lambda expression and and therefore uh, there must be an interface, right? So in the inside the interface, there will be one abstract method which whose implementation we are trying to pass, right? That's a that's a rule, right? That's a contract. So basically now what it will do is it will go inside the comparator class. It will check, okay, this is a function interface, great. So what is that one abstract method? That one abstract method is compare. And then what it will do is it will check the type of uh, these two, you know, parameter list. And here it is, it is a generic type. And since uh, it this this basically this is a comparator of integer that we are creating, therefore uh, it will okay, say okay. Then we can uh, let this two types will be of integers, right? Similarly, uh, here we can also choose for our hotels. We can also choose to remove this hotel, and it will still not give give this error. It will be an inferred uh, type parameters because what it will do is it will go inside this filter hotel. It will see okay what is the interface, the filtering condition interface. It's a function interface. Great. What is that one single abstract method? This is this test. Okay. Uh, if this is test, then uh, what is the type of the parameter that is being passed? It is hotel, right? And it will basically try to match the parameter list with this parameter list. So let's say if you want to pass another parameter hotel two, it will give you an error saying that, hey, I can't find such a parameter list because see, it is trying to match the uh, parameter list, right? Or the function signature with basically this, this function signature, right? So here you have to pass only one hotel, right? And the compiler will figure out the type of parameters. Also one more thing, you declare the type of one parameter and you don't declare the type of other parameter, you can't do that. Either you have to declare both the parameters or you won't declare any of the parameters. Otherwise you would run into error, okay? Also one more thing, when you are trying to declare a, a modifier to the parameter, let's say modifier like final, then if you are declaring a modifier like final, you have to then infer type parameter won't work and you have to declare the type of parameter as well, right? Otherwise it will be an error. In this case, it would be a hotel, right? If you are removing this hotel, you are using a modifier without uh, declaring the type, you would run into an error. So these are the like basic, you know, uh, uh, rules of parameter list. And you would like slowly with, with practice, you would, you know, get a hang of these things. I'm just figuring, I'm just telling you all these things. You can probably note it down somewhere now, but with practice, this will, you know, you will get better in this and this will get embedded within your muscle memory, right? Don't worry too much if you don't remember all these things straight away. Also, one important rule is if you have only one parameter, then you don't need these brackets, okay? Then you don't need these brackets. But if you have more than two parameters, then you need these brackets because see here there is two parameters. So if I remove these two parameters, I will run into an error, right? So whenever you have only one parameter, you 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 don't need this enclosing brackets for the parameter list. But when you have more than one parameter, then you need these enclosing brackets. Okay. So this was about the rules uh, for the parameter list part. Next we have the arrow, which is like just an arrow that separates the you know the lamb parameter list with the uh, function body. And now let's look at the rules of the lambda body. That is this part. Okay, so let's come to the first rule. Okay, so whenever your function consists of the function that you're trying to pass consists of only one line of code, you can omit this curly braces. That means you don't need to wrap your function inside any curly braces, right? Now, why does it give an error when you do that? The reason is when when you are removing the curly braces, right? You have to remove the return statement as well as the semicolon. The compiler in turn it will convert this piece of code into the piece of code that we wrote over here uh, prior to this. That is basically it will convert this piece of code into return uh, the hotel price less than equals to 2000 and it will put a semicolon and it will oh, like basically put a curly braces as well. So please remember whenever you have only one line of code as your function body, then you can remove the curly braces and if you remove the curly braces, you have to remove the semicolon as well as if you have to you also have to return the return statement, right? But if you choose to put 
the curly braces right that means now so before putting on the curly braces this was just an expression right so the compiler would treat it as an expression but once you know when you're choosing to put a curly braces now the compiler will put it take it as a block right so it will execute all the piece of code that is there inside the block so therefore the compiler won't put any return statement implicitly so here you have to explicitly mention the return statement as well as the semicolon right because here you are you are giving the curly braces means the compiler won't treat it as an expression anymore and it would treat it as a block as a block of code right so therefore you have to write the entire block of code so now uh, a golden rule is that you have to remember is whenever there is one line of code then inside your inside your function body just get rid of the curly braces treat this pass uh, treat this as an expression and when it's uh, when it is an expression you don't need to put the semicolon uh, and also you don't need to put the return statement okay so we can also store a lambda expression inside a reference and how can we do that so let's say we want to store this lambda expression okay as in in, in sub reference and we can do that the type of the reference will be the name of the interface that is a filtering condition okay so filtering condition lambda expression okay is equals to this okay and we can basically pass this lambda expression as the parameter so instead of creating here we can store this okay and we can uh, store the reference and the type of the reference will be the name of the interface cool also one more uh, thing is that how does a lambda do type checking how does a lambda expression does a type checking so that is very simple so basically what it will do is it will go to this so basically you are trying to pass a lambda expression to this filter hotels right so basically it will go to the filter hotels it will check that okay what is the interface then it will go to the interface it will check okay it's a function function interface and then basically it will check the signature of this method that what does this method return and what does the parameters right what are the parameters does it take so it returns a boolean right and it takes object of hotel so therefore the type of this function is going to be basically boot a function that takes a like takes one hotel object as a parameter and returns a boolean right so when the compiler will do the type checking it will check okay uh, the, the lambda expression that we are trying to pass does it take one single hotel object as a parameter and does it return a boolean value if that is the case then uh, we can pass this lambda expression it won't give any error so that is basically the type checking i've already uh, mentioned about it previously okay so now there are two more important concepts which i would like to cover but before that let us create a method so public uh, test lambda something like that okay and let's do it a void okay and here we would be creating a lab we copying this lambda expression okay and here let me instead of writing an expression let me like provide some curly braces around it and hence we have to pass a return statement like provide a return statement as well and basically we would be like doing this return uh this this piece of code or uh, we would just copy paste it okay so this function basically does nothing okay and since we are returning it uh okay so this will be a list of hotels right yeah and we need the hotel service object as well so here we will be pasting it cool cool so basically uh what i'm doing is there is this test lambda function which is creating as uh, object of the hotel service and here uh, we are just filtering hotels right based on a condition right nothing fancy which i've already seen this before now the point that i'm trying to make is inside this lambda function what if we use the this keyword right what happens uh now i told you okay first before that let's create a private member of the main class private int let's say field okay and let's inside this uh let's say that field has some value or let's not give any value okay? now uh, what happens if we write try to use the this keyword inside this lambda expression okay now people might think okay since this lambda expression is converted into an anonymous inner class the this the this keyword might be associated to that anonymous inner class right but no that is not the case this is a misconception right and this is an important interview question as well the context of this keyword is not associated with that anonymous inner class that the compiler will create that anonymous inner class is basically the class that implements that filtering condition interface that inter function interface right this this is not associated with that anonymous inner class 
this this is associated with this particular class main or in other words this basically refers to the enclosing context that means that in the class in which this lambda expression was written this refers to that particular enclosing class so this keyword refers to the main so you will see if you do this dot field you can access this field that we wrote over here so this this context this keyword does not refer to the anonymous owner class but it refers to the enclosing class that is the main over here okay this one concept let's say there's a local variable which we can name as price okay in price is equal to let's say 2000 and we can definitely use this local variable inside this lambda expression there's absolutely no harm but we cannot change or modify this local variable this would give an error right we cannot modify the local variable inside this lambda expression the reason is the, what, the, let's see what the error we get local price variable is defined and enclosing scope must be final or effectively final so that ideally means whenever you're trying to in, uh, use any local variable inside the lambda expression that that variable must be final now if you don't explicitly define it as final as this is the case the compiler will take it as an effectively final value the value the, the variable whose value won't change right also if you try to do this if you try to like change the value outside the lambda expression also you would get an error over here it says that the price defined and enclosing scope must be final or effectively final right so please remember that inside a lambda expression if you want to use any local variable it has to be final that means it has to be either explicitly declared as final like final int price right or if it is not defined the compiler will explicitly like think that this is a final variable and if you try to change the variable then the compiler will flag an error okay so please keep in mind this is a very important thing a very important concept that if you're trying to use a local variable inside a lambda expression right that local variable should be final either it should be declared as final or you have to or it should be effectively final which means that the value once declared uh, or once assigned a value cannot be changed again okay so now my question that why does this thing happen this is very simple see when you are you here you are writing this function body okay and you are not executing this functions now you are just writing the definition of this function and you are like and now basically you are passing this function right the function body now you might question that why the compiler is giving errors uh, when you're trying to change the local variable what is the reason behind it again always try to find out the reason right okay so for that let me let me modify the code and let me say instead of you know doing this let me return the lambda expression straight away from this function right return the lambda expression and this is basically this basically means this this will return a filtering condition instead of list of hotels okay okay so this returns a filtering condition and here what in the main function what we'll do is we will create an instance of main main is equals to new main okay then we will call this main dot uh, hotel service or test lambda sorry test lambda which will give us an instance of uh, basically which will return us the lambda expression we can store it inside the filtering condition filtering condition uh, lambda okay and what we'll do is we would say okay hotel service uh, hotel service we won't need the hotel service here okay hotel service dot uh, filter hotels based on the lambda expression right so let's say we have a code like this okay uh, let me comment this out okay so here what we are doing is we are simply in in this test lambda or like let me uh, we can give a better name but in this function we are just uh, okay let me just rename it to get lambda expression okay then that would be a better readable name okay so here what we are doing is uh, we are like we created a function right which returns us the lambda expression Please note that here we are returning the function that we are going to pass. We are not calling this function. Okay. So when this lambda expression is passed, right? So first we are calling this function, right? Which has a local variable. This function, this get lambda expression has a local variable price, right? And if you want, then now like this lambda expression is returned. And when the lambda expression is returned, this function is done with this execution. That means this price, local variable price, has absolutely no meaning okay now you pass this lambda expression and then inside this filter hotels when this uh, when the method uh, test would be called this piece of code would be executed right 
and then it would need the price price variable the value of the price variable right but this price variable is no more there because this function is done with this execution it's 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 removed from the stack so where will it find the value of the price so for that reason what the lambda does is lambda captures the value of the price okay so when when it basically returns this lambda expression or when you create this lambda expression what happens is it basically captures the value of the price that is 2000 right so therefore it does not do a variable capture it does a value capture okay so basically this piece of code is actually converted to 2000 right so that is why you it, compiler doesn't allow you to change the price over here then you run into an error you get getting my point because basically what when when you are writing this piece of code the compiler knows that this is a local variable that is getting used and when this actual lambda function will be getting executed inside the hotel service class this variable would die it won't be there so for that reason it has to capture the value the current value of this variable over here so it will basically store the value of the price it will capture the value of price that is 2000 now and it will store it right it is not allowing you to change the value of the price again and again because it has to capture the value and for that it has to be final right There's, there has to be some consistency to that value and that is why it is final right and the, or, or the compiler expects it to be expe effectively final that means you cannot change the value of the price once defined right because it knows that once when you would be actually executing this function this price variable would die right so you, you are only caring about the value but not the variable cool so therefore this price is effect this price should be this local variable should be effectively final only then you can use it inside the lambda expression very important concept right another thing is uh, let's say instead of the price let's say that we have a list list of integer and that is new array list again a very important concept so this was a primitive data type and this is an object reference right and this is also a local variable now for some reason let's say we are trying to use this list. So let's say we say that, okay, ER dot size, something like that. I know it has no meaning, but what I'm trying to show you here is instead of this price, using this price local variable, we are trying to utilize uh, this array list local variable inside the Lambda function. Okay. Now, two things I'm doing over here. One, what if I do ER dot add one? Compiler doesn't give an error. Why? But if I do an ER equals new array list, the compiler gives an error. Very important. See, if I try to do error equals new array list, the compiler will give an error which says that it has to be final. But if I do error dot add one, that means if I add a value, if I try to modify this array list, it does not give an error, right? If I just do this, the error would be gone. The reason behind this is, see, this is an object reference. These are concepts of Java, but still I'm like letting you know about these things so that you don't get confused. See, this is a reference, right? And this reference variable lies in the uh, lies in the stack. Okay, there are two memory spaces. One is the stack and one is the heap. All the objects that you created lies in the heap part. And all the local reference variables or the primitive variables, they lie in the lo uh, in the stack part, right? So basically, whenever... So this reference variable, this reference variable is actually pointing to some array list object that lies in the heap. But this reference variable, AR, lies in the stack, right? So now if you're trying to change the value of the reference variable, that what when you do this, like let's say AR equals to new array list, what happens is this AR will now not point to this particular array list, right? But it will point to some different array list. And as a result, this value of the reference variable is getting changed. And as a result, as a result, what will happen is a compiler will throw an error. But when you're doing this ARR.add1, you're not changing the reference value, right? You're simply adding one element to that object, but your reference value is still pointing to the same object, right? So this AR, when you try to add the item, it is adding one element to that particular object. That is fine because your AR is still pointing to the same object, right? Your reference variable's value is not changed because it is still pointing to the same object. Yeah, your object is getting modified, but the compiler doesn't care about it. But if you're, if you're now instantiating this AR, reference variable to some new object that means you're changing the reference variable value you know because now it is pointing to some new object and that's where the compiler will flag an error right if this local variable is pointing to some new object then the compiler will throw an error because now the reference value value is getting changed think of it in this way that this ar is pointing to a address right an address is basically the address of the object that is array list you're adding an extra element to the array list, that's fine, but the reference values address doesn't change because it is pointing to the same object, array list, right? But if you are instantiating a new array list, as we are doing in line 21, your address value changes. 
right? So therefore, the compiler will flag an error, okay? This is a very fundamental concept of Java. It's not a concept of lambdas, but yeah. So please remember, if you're, if you're using a local variable in a lambda expression, since the lambda expression is not getting executed at that point of time, it will do a variable capture. And in order to do the variable capture, it must accept that the local variable must be final, explicitly declared as final by the user, or it expects it to be effectively final. That is, its value cannot be changed. And if you change it, try to change that value, it would, the compiler will flag an error. And also the this context, which I told is uh, basically points out to the enclosing class, this context. Okay, so we are almost at the last part of our video. Uh, but before ending this video, there is a one last topic that I want to touch. That is the inbuilt functional interfaces that Java has already provided. So uh, we will start off with this hotel service class, this filtering condition that we wrote, right? The functional interface that we created, you know, the filtering condition functional interface that we created over here was actually not required because such a similar functional interfaces is already being created by Java, right? So let's see how we can use that. And we can replace this filtering condition with an inbuilt class in Java called predicate. Uh, which is predicate of hotel because we'll be filtering based on the hotels, right? You will import this predicate from the java.util class, right? And we'll save this. And here, also in the main class, instead of this filtering condition, we will use a predicate of hotel. And we will import this. And this will also be predicate of hotel, okay? And here also, predicate of hotel, we will be changing it. Okay, so let's see what does this predicate, uh, let's look into this uh, predicate interface. So it's a functional interface that is already defined and it has the same method boolean test, right? So we don't need to explicitly write a boolean function, right? And it has two more default methods as I told you that uh, an interface can have multiple default methods and uh, a functional interface can have multiple default and static methods. So this too has a couple of static methods as well as a couple of default methods. You will look into a couple of them. But yeah, wh what I want to say is that predicate is a inbuilt functional interface. So whenever, whenever you have an interface where you want to test something, right, where which basically takes an object and returns a boolean value, so you want to pass such a method, then always use the predicate interface. No need to stick to it a separate uh, interface, right? Okay. Now I will show you some other uses of predicate. How can you use that? Um, this is what we call as combining predicate. Uh, so let's say that you want to check whether a number is divisible by six, right? So for that, we have to check whether that number is divisible by two and that number is divisible by three. If the, if the number is divisible by, by both these two numbers, right, two and three, then we can say that it's a, it's divisible by six. So for that, how will we write is we'll write two predicates, right? One is predicate of integer is equals to uh, like let's say divisible by two and here we will pass a condition right and what will be that condition it will take a number right we will write a lambda expression which will create and take a number and it will simply write to say return number mod two is equals to equals zero right so th this is the condition right it just checks whether the number is divisible by two or not okay uh, there is okay uh, sorry uh, this should be passed here okay so uh, why it is a predicate because here you see it takes an integer right it takes an integer uh, that is and it returns a boolean value okay so that is why it is a predicate now we know that this can be type inferred so we don't need to specifically mention this as integer so we can delete this also since there is only one parameter we don't need this bracket okay also we don't need this curly braces as this is just one line of code so we don't need this and also we can get rid of the return statement because there is no curly braces it's just an expression right similarly we can copy this piece of code and we can write predicate divisible by three, number number mod three is equals to zero. Okay, so now we'll be checking for divisible by six. So what we'll do is we'll take this lambda expression divisible by two, okay? And this lambda, this is a predicate, right? This is of type predicate. So predicate interface, we just saw as a default method that is and, right? So we'll call this and, and what this and takes is, it takes another predicate, right? So this predicate dot and takes another predicate and it returns a predicate. Just, just get, let me get inside that function. So it's a default function. It takes another predicate and it returns uh, up as a predicate as well. So back into the main class, what we do is we did divisible by two and we did divisible by three. So we pass another predicate and it returns another predicate, which is let's say, which we call this predicate as divisible by six. Predicate integer divisible by six. So divisible by six is a predicate, right? Which we get by doing divisible by two dot and divisible by three. That means if both the logic is true, okay? Uh, and now we can do sysout divisible by six dot test, 
let's say six and it should return true okay so th in this way we can check whether a number is divisible by six or not and similarly we have also uh, an or method as well right so let's go into this so basically what it does is this or is basically nothing it first checks whether this object is null or not and then it first calls the test function right and then it also calls the test function of the of this parameter right similarly for and what it does is it calls the test function of this right and then basically it's just a logical and and logical or right it calls the test function of the other object other predicate so yeah this is it and also there is a negate method which basically returns if it, if, if, if it is evaluating it is getting evaluated true then it will get evaluated to false because we are applying it is basically calling the test function but with a uh, negate sign so it is like pretty straightforward i don't need to explain much it's pretty self-explanatory so that is predicate now we'll look into another functional interface which we call consumer right so let's see what does this consumer do so basically consumer is another functional interface which has basically a method so let's say this is a list right so we can do lst dot for each right and you see this takes a consumer okay now let's look at what is a consumer so we will import this consumer and we will open the declaration so it's a function interface as you can see and it has one method called accept so it takes a parameter but it doesn't doesn't do anything it just consumes it so that is why it returns a void and that is why the name is consumer right so you can see it has a default method as well which which is and then which takes a consumer and returns a consumer right so we will also see that so let's jump into the main as of now and first create a create a consumer so basically what we'll do is uh, let's say so it takes one value right and it does not return anything so maybe it does something with that value so let's say we would ideally want to print that value okay so let's say it takes an integer right and it prints that integer cool so yeah so it prints that integer now how can we pass this consumer this is an integer okay so what we'll do is this this list that we created over here right it has a for each method which i just showed you that it takes a consumer okay uh, so here we would pass the consumer and you see it will print the list so now if I run this uh, piece of code you would see this true is for you know uh, this predicate uh, predicate function that I created and this is this 1 2 3 5 is basically printing the list okay so in this way using the for each loop uh, we can just pass a consumer and it will print the array right uh, also we can chain consumers right uh, which similarly which we did for predicate by using the and then functions basically you can take this consumer right and we can apply this and then function and we can pass another consumer okay and that will in turn will return a consumer right so this we can do so if you just want to you know if you go to the consumer and you see what this and then method does is basically it first calls the accept right and then it calls the accept method of the parameter right that is the next consumer which you pass as parameter and it goes on till this object is null okay then there is another uh, functional interface that is supplier so let's see what it is so we will try to import supplier first supplier which basically doesn't take anything but supplies you some value okay so we can do something like mat.random so it doesn't take an input but every time it gives you some random value so we will try first try to uh, import supplier and check what it is so you see supplier is a function interface that it is just one method it doesn't take any parameter but it returns some value right so if you want to generate some random value it's, it's a good way so what you can do is you can simply print it has one get method supplier dot get right and it will give you a random value okay um here you have to make it a double okay so let me run this code and you see you get a random value that is this okay again you print this we will get another random value cool okay now next we look into another very very important in built-in function interface that is function right so it takes two parameters so let's say we want to convert a string we want to map a string with its uh, integer uh, with its string length right so str to len map okay and this will take a string right and what we will do is we want to map it to its particular length right to st string dot length okay uh, we will just uh, import this function from the util package you will see it has a method that is applied so it takes one value and returns another value so basically you pass in some value and you apply that and return some other value right 
and it has some default methods like compose which we are going to see in action which is also a method that is and then right and also it has method identity this identity is a static method so this is like very simple let's say if you want to uh, like get this string so basically you, you, whenever you want to do something like this string string right you instead of doing this so let's say i will just show you uh let's say you want to have a identity function okay uh, identity okay and you want to do this okay so instead of writing this okay there would be use cases where you might do this instead of doing this you want to take a string and you want to return a string you would simply do function dot identity that's it okay so i showed you this also uh, for this str to len map okay so what you would do is this str to len map this is a function right you would call the apply method right and you would pass a string let's say riddhi right and this would return you an integer right because it's a string to integer you pass a string you get an integer okay so integer len is equal to this and if you print this out you would see with these uh, number of characters that is six is printed again you go to this function you see it it takes the value of t right it takes this first parameter in uh, first parameter and returns you the second parameter so you see here it was string integer so it took a string it returned you an integer and how did it convert the string to integer this is the logic that is being defined over here okay also you can compose functions you can compose multiple functions just as we did for predicate right using the and method and similarly for consumer so you go inside the function you see that you have this compose method right which basically calls the apply method and in the apply method it basically passes an, an argument right which is basically before dot apply right you can probably play around with it you will understand and also you have the and then method as well okay so which is basically which we call consuming a function so what you would do is let's see your function call integer that squares that takes an integer right that takes the value of a and does this right so it takes a and returns a into a and then you want to there's another function which takes an integer and let's say add one okay so it takes a we can remove this bracket and it does a plus one okay so what you can do is you can simply do like this you first do squares dot and then and you pass another function right which again takes a function that is add one right this returns a function so you can now apply right because this returns a function so you can now use the apply method and here you pass an integer that is six so you the value that will be printed is 37 because so basically how it is evaluated i will like uh, like uh, explain you in simple terms so basically this squares is called right so basically uh, in the apply function of the squares this 6 will be called right so it will be 36 and then you are calling and then you are calling the add one so then 36 will be plus and 36 plus 1 is 37 right so in this way we get 37 okay so this is all about composing functions again this since this returns a function again we can apply another function right we can again square it right so again if you want to square it we can do squares we can do and then you can again pass a square and again it will return a function and then we can also do apply right so this will return you 9 25 yeah okay so because you first passed uh, squares right so it was 4 and then you added 1 5 and then you again squared it so that is 25 okay also you have two more function interfaces binary operator and unary operator so you can probably like go and check out the declarations and how they are used i'm not going to cover it because uh, like you can like i have now told you right so you can go and read uh, check out the documentations okay um also there is one more thing i would like to say every function interface if each of this function interface has a corresponding primitive type function interface right but what i mean by this is you have in in predicate right that basically uh, when you when you want to print predicate of integer you can use this in predicate okay so you see this is a function interface which takes an in value right so in the normal predicate it was taking a generic object okay in predicate is basically like the same like an integer is just that instead of generic it just takes an in value the reason behind it is when you are using a generic type uh, you can't use the primitive integer right since it's a generic type you can't use the integer class right it is a concept of generics so you have to use the 
like the wrapper class integer and as a result since you're using the wrapper class integer there is a boxing that is happening boxing unboxing that is continuously happening because you're converting the primitive type into the wrapper class and vice versa and, and that can cause performance issues uh, so in order to deal with that uh, this this function interface uh, developers what they have done is for the, all the primitive data types they are given in predicate double predicate right you can do all the same things you can apply you know like the same methods so basically if you want to you know see uh, how in predicate is implemented so i can just probably comment this out and i will just copy this piece of code and like this will basically be the same thing okay you see instead of writing this i can i could have easily done dead in predicate right? so whenever you're dealing with primitive data types you can easily do this here also instead of doing the predicate of integer you can do in predicate okay instead of here as well uh, you can use this okay so whenever you want to use a primitive data type right don't use the wrapper class or this generic predicate of integer use in predicate double predicate boolean predicate and something like that okay similarly for supplier as well instead of supplier of t you also have something called double supplier okay similarly you have in supplier and stuff like that okay so you can import this right you have this double supplier class and here instead of get you have get as double okay so here similarly you have in supplier and get as int right so these are the inbuilt function interface that you have you have predicate you have supplier you have consumer right similarly for consumer you have in consumer so if you want to see that as well you see you have in consumer boolean con uh, like uh, double consumer and stuff like that so you have four basic function interfaces one is the predicate where you, which you which you use to filter out values we have consumers right uh, which have the suppliers right and we have functions these are the four primary uh, function interfaces that is already inbuilt and mostly used and also uh, they have their corresponding primitive data type values so, you get, so that you can get rid of the boxing and unboxing right that might have performance issues so that was the inbuilt um, function interfaces that you have and as a homework i am asking you to check the uh, binary operator as well as the unary operator right uh, okay cool uh, and one thing that i would like to suggest to you is you have to practice these things you have to you have to practice these lambda expressions to like get it embedded within your muscle memory right so a good thing is i did you when you're developing the, some projects right use the lambda expressions right or what you can do is when you are practicing dsa questions in deed code please please write lambda expressions there you would get a lot of opportunities for example when you would be doing custom sorting you can write lambda expressions right that is one definitely one way Okay, so there is this one last thing which I wanted to cover in relation with lambdas. So this is something we call method references and this is just nothing. This is just a syntactical sugar. Okay, so let's say we have this example where we have this list, right? A list of one, two, three, four. It's a list of integers and uh, then we are calling the for each function on this list, right? So this for each function basically takes a consumer. So you know uh, that what a consumer does because I've just taught you this uh, in this video. So basically what is happening over here is we are passing a function and the function definition goes like this. So we pass a parameter x to this function and this function basically just calls the system dot out dot print in that is basically it prints the uh, value of x okay now there is a syntactical sugar which you can apply over here right whenever there is a lambda right where inside the lambda function there is only one line of code that you're writing and that one line of code is equivalent to calling some other function right then you can use something which we call as method references and how does it look like we will see that in action right now so instead of writing this piece of code i would not delete it rather i would comment it and i would also copy it and instead of doing this the same piece of code i can remove these x and all these method signatures and all and simply do system dot out then a double column right and print ln okay and this will print and give the same result as this one now you might be getting confused at how did this magic suddenly happen so let's take a look at the definition or the basic syntactic rules or method reference and then it, this line of code would be clear to you okay so let's say you have this lambda okay where you are passing some argument okay this argument in this in, uh, in this lambda you are calling some static method of a class so let's say class name dot static method some static method and you are passing this argument right so if your lambda looks like this there is only one line of code right and inside this one line of code you are calling some static method then you can rewrite this using method references by removing this parameter list and all these things and also you can just write class name and double colon and the static method name okay you don't even need to pass the org and all 
right? The compiler in turn will convert this piece of code into this. So now if you compile these two codes, you will see that println is basically a static method of system.out, right? So therefore the class name is system.out, okay? And double colon println and the compiler understands, okay, that means that when the user writes this, there is one parameter that is passed to this function and that parameter would be passed over here, right? Now let's say instead of calling the static method, right? You want to call the instance method. For example, you want to call the instance method of the argument that is passed, right? So let's say uh, in this case, what you would do is argument dot your lambda basically looks like this argument dot some method, right? Some method of argument class, right? So you can rewrite this as class name again here you would write the class name and this class name will basically be equivalent to the type of this instance or this argument right so I, I will like show you an example and then you would understand but for now just look at this at this definition okay now let's look at look at this example so let's say there is a uh, like there's a list of string okay so let's say list of string str equals to list dot of and something like abr and you no know, stuff like this okay cool now here you can understand we are trying to sort this thing and we are passing a comparator right and which basically uh, is just one line of code where on one instance method i am calling some method and i am passing uh, the rest of uh, the uh, parameters as arguments to this particular function right so you can basically using this method so let me also write another rule which i missed so let's say there's argument one and there are rest of the arguments right arguments two arguments three and so on okay so i'm just giving a dot dot okay and let's say your lambda looks like this where arg uh, argument one dot some method where you're passing argument two and some rest of the other parameters over here right so there also you can simply write like this and the compiler will take the pain of converting this code into this code okay so here you can rewrite this as str dot sort Okay, you don't need to give the parameters. The compiler will take care of it. All you need to do is you just need to write the class name because S1 is of type string, right? So string double colon and compared to ignore case. And that's it. And also please remember, you don't need to explicitly call this function as we were doing over here. The compiler will call it for you. And this gives, you know, a better representation in terms of code readability because ideally you are not calling this method right here ideally you are passing this method right so it, it feels like so and that is why you shouldn't call this method over here this opening bracket shouldn't be here the compiler will basically translate this code into this right so it will say okay it, it takes a comparator so there must be two parameters right so the first parameter it will assume that okay this is the first parameter and this is the second parameter so what it will do is it will do s1 dot compared to ignore case s2 right so it would do it on your behalf right another case is let's say you have a local variable already right so let's say you your, your your definition looks like this so this is the case one this is the case two and now let's look at the third case basically i would just comment it out move the errors so now let's say there is there is a third case where you have some arguments right but you want uh, there is some local variable as well right some local variable okay let's say of type list of integer okay let's say let's say lst okay so here you want to do something like this your lambda looks like this lst dot something okay where you are passing this argument okay in this case uh, your method reference should be lst that is your reference variable right or local reference variable right which is lst in this case and here it cannot be the class name right because you have to explicitly use the local variable over here right but in these two cases it was the class name here it should be the local reference variable double colon and uh, it should be the method name right and the compiler will convert this piece of code into the above code right and make sure you don't you're not you're not going to use the open braces because you're not calling the function over here so let's do two more examples so let's say this is one lambda function right so you can see this lambda function only has one method call that is the method definition so you can easily convert this piece of code into uh, you you would basically see the type of the list is a list right so list double column contains is the method okay and you don't need to do anything this will be basically converted into this okay also let's take a look at another example so for example you have this so this parseint is a static method on integer right and it takes uh, and this lambda function basically has uh, takes one string as input and it does this integer dot parseint dot s so basically you have to take the class name integer double colon percent and the compiler will convert this piece of code into this piece right so this is what you can do 
so this is the power of method references and you will see a lot of in action don't worry if you don't don't get all of it right now with practice eventually you will and we would see a lot of it in action when i would be teaching you streams also there is something called constructor references it is nothing fancy it's just the same thing so let's have a consumer and we know that consumer is basically a type of lambda which exposes a function that takes nothing and produces some output right so let's say your lambda basically looks like this that uh, Let's say you want to create this new array list. Okay. Okay. Or let's say you you have a lambda which creates a new student, right? Or a new uh, hotel review, right? Be, instead of writing this piece of code, what you can simply do is you can just remove this piece of code and write it as array list new. Okay. Similarly, for this, instead of writing this piece of code, you can simply write student new. So that would create a new uh, student object for you, okay, in that lambda function, whenever the lambda function is called. Also, let's say what if there is, uh, it is a parameterized constructor. Let's say you are passing marks and age and uh, here you are initializing it with marks and age. Don't worry, this, this method, corresponding method reference syntax won't change and the compiler would understand it for you and it would like convert this piece of code into this, right? So that is the beauty of method references. Uh, the compiler will take care of all the you know method calls and converting this piece of code into this piece. So basically it works like magic behind the scenes but that is what it is. Please ensure that you remember these three rules. Again I would iterate. So whenever inside a lambda function let's say you are only having one line of code and that one line of code is basically just calling some function then you can change this entire lambda into something called class name double column starting method and if it is an instance method then it is class name double column the instance method right I, I would change it to instance method sorry okay and the third rule says that however if you want to do something like this where you are where you are calling the method on some local variable right that is not passed as parameter here then you have to instead of the class type you would be using the local variable uh, and then you would be using the double column and then the method name right you don't need to call the method or pass any argument to that method because any we are not calling that method the compiler will take care of it and if you want to instantiate a, a new object then in a, instead of that method name you simply use new right and the name of the class type okay and if, if it is a parameterized constructor don't worry since you're not calling the new directly over here just passing this lambda function you don't need to like pass any parameter so that's all about method references there's nothing fancy right you with practice eventually you would get it uh, so please please uh, practice this lambda expressions because if you are not practicing you won't be able to remember the syntaxes and all you would struggle and you would forget every concept i have taught you that i have done my job but if you go and go ahead and practice you won't remember anything trust me guys do comment down below that what is the next topic you want me to make a video on in java and please don't forget to press the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that every time i upload a new video and notified and don't forget to like this video please guys like this video it, it gives me a lot of motivation to make such content um, and it takes a lot of time as i said to create such content so it would really mean the world to me if you are supporting me and yeah i think that's the end of this video please practice this guys please don't just watch the video and like keep it aside you need to practice lambda expressions to get acclimatized otherwise you would be having a hard time but it's easy at the end of the day it's easy it's just a practice is just you have to get it uh, like embedded within your muscle memory that's it once you get it uh, it's, it's very easy and it's very cool way of writing code in java it's a new feature of java by the way so yeah uh, it is asked in almost all companies and if you go to any company you would see java 8 in action you would see lambda expressions everywhere streams everywhere optionals everywhere streams and optionals have something that i've not covered yet i will cover in one of my future videos uh, but yeah, do comment down below what is the next video you want to make me a video on and i will see you in some other video till then stay safe and goodbye and also one more request if you're liking my content don't forget to tag me on linkedin or on twitter you can find my handles in in the description down below and do comment down below what is a new thing that you learned and also don't forget to share that if, if you're making any notes that would really really help the community uh, people who make the best notes, I would probably pin the comment or, you know, uh, I, I, I would like probably uh, reward them in some other way. But really, it will really, really benefit the community if you can make such notes for my tutorials. And I would share it with the other audience. So, yeah, you can, you are more than welcome to do that. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you in some other video. Till then, stay safe. Goodbye. And today was holy. So, I was recording this content. Belated happy only to everyone. And I will see you.